Welcome to the Jointery Podcast, a podcast where this, we study the lives of <laughs> study the lives of two dads trying to find the balance between the families, hobbies, and work. This week on the Jointery, we discover the answers to the questions such as: So, how obsessed are you with yourself? Uh, I've Googled myself. If that's what, if, if we're gonna go there, I've definitely done that. Let's just search for the meaning of life as it had never been witnessed before. The Jointery Podcast. Boom. You're recording. There we go. Hi. Dude, this is our first podcast. This is, and we are very excited about this. <laughs> this, this, this is going really smooth so far. Yeah, we've, uh, we've uh, been talking about doing this for quite some time, and uh, locking it down is, is a tough thing to do, especially in our current situation where you know dads with young kids both work both have shop time that we're trying to get into and so uh trying to lock this down on top of all that yeah like we need to add (laughs) extra shit to our plan and the funny thing is that this hasn't happened yet because the theme of the podcast is is the reason it hasn't happened yet exactly (laughs) (laughs) you know so uh, so 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 the podcast is called the jointery um because it's obviously us bringing things together that's right right that's uh, right. but it's but it's it's all about uh like two dads uh balancing uh their family lives uh their shop time uh and uh their work right yep. and and yep. prioritizing those 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 things so that's and- this whole thing's about and we're also going to, you know, bring some people on that we are really, really interested in talking to because uh, why not? We have, yeah, <laughs> it's, our, it's our podcast. We can do whatever we want. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be really it's fun. The, this is literally going to be the best podcast in like three months from now. In three months from now? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be top, 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 top of the charts, I'm guessing. I would think so. I mean, I mean, what else is out there really that's going to compete with this? I don't know of any podcast. <laughs> I've never even listened to a podcast, so this is going to be great. Oh so, man! I, like I don't even listen to the podcast I was a guest on. So I did. It was good. You you nailed it. No, yeah, no, you, I was. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm I'm obsessed with myself. <laughs> I was say what's what are, what are the actual chances that you haven't listened to that like ten times? Let's be real. Yeah. Well, actually, it, it, it's a good question though. So, how obsessed are you with yourself? uh i've googled myself if that's what if, if we're gonna go there i've definitely done that uh okay. i watch my videos quite frequently but i think that's mainly to kind of pick them apart you know what i mean um yeah i, I re-listen to shows i've just recorded right after i've d- recorded them so like i'll do an hour show and then i'll sit down afterwards and re-listen to the show just to hear my voice. No, I'm joking. Just to, you know, I like to, I like to critique myself. You know what I mean? I like to. How do you and, like uh, your, how your voice sounds? I'm not in love with it, but. Uh, does it sound better in your head? It all, well, of course it does. It always sounds better in my head. No, I'm, I'm, I was never a fan. When I was younger, I was never a fan of listening to myself on a recording. Like I never, ever. Like it's been being in a band and playing music and stuff and like singing backups. And it was always so frustrating because I never thought I sounded like I did. You know what I mean? Like I never thought my voice sounded like I thought my voice sounded in my head. And so you're like, if I could just make my voice sound like the voice of that I hear, then I'd be good. Yeah, I thought so. But um, but anyways, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm uh, healthily. Uh, I have a healthy um amount of loving myself and wanting to watch myself what about you I, i'm borderline unhealthy <laughs> <laughs> like i rewatch all my stories like well though it's like kind of what you said like like to pick it apart right so mm-hmm. like i'm constantly watching my stuff and i'm like if it's boring i immediately hate it like when i edit when i do video editing the second i and this is like goes for a 15 second reel or a youtube video like the second I'm bored, like I'm like, this is boring. This is dragging. I cut it out. Like even even like down to tenths of a second. I'm like, mm, it's going too long, bro. But yeah, especially with video editing, right? 
especially yeah. with that when you're especially. when you're doing when you're because i've i do i've been there i've i've uh you know when you're trying to get to that that sweet you know 30 second you know mark or whatever you're trying to get to you have to go through and watch it numerous numerous times and yeah i learned that the like when i first was making videos on instagram i dude if you go back on my page i was taking the full minute you know what i mean i wanted every minute every second of that minute and i was trying to jam as much stuff into that minute as i could possibly oh. jam you know what i mean it was dude, just it's like, like- People need to see all the screws I screw into this board. <laughs> Other than they won't know that I put six screws in it. And then if I only show one screw, they're going to think I only put one screw in there. Yeah. Every detail, bro. It was just like, and then I finally started to realize that like, you don't have to show every angle, every cut, every, and it slows you down too. You know, you, you, you speed, you, you start to edit pre-edit. You start to pre-edit your own sh- your own videos before you shoot them as you get into it. But I mean, yeah, at the beginning it was like I wanted to show everything. I wanted to show, and all my clips were like, like you said, like they would be uh, the cut. You know, I'd be making the cut, and then I would uh, leave extra. You know, it was like all about tightening it up. And I was never, yeah. tight. I wasn't doing that at the beginning. I was just, you know, like you said, I was just putting the whole thing. And yeah, it was boring, man. Like, so I get it. I get what you're trying to say is what I'm trying to what is what I'm trying to say. I get what you're trying to say is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I have a, a healthy ego though. So like, you know, I, I think that like when I, when I am looking and critiquing myself, I also give myself props when I'm like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Wait, yeah. th- this is the g- coming from the guy who's going to make his own high five slapping machine in his shop. That's that's the guy. Yeah. That's the guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think you have a healthy, healthy ego. I would have to say. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, look, I, look, it's most people don't love themselves as much as they should. You know, um, a lot of people, I think, would have the attitude of like, eh, I can tolerate myself. I can never I don't think I could ever hang out with a person who had the same personality as me. Right. So that's why I think I have a hard time with my son sometimes because it's so much alike. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's like, he's, I'm like, I think I would find myself annoying to hang out with. And then I hang out with my son who's got the same personality. And I'm like, I love you, man. God, you're annoying sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Driving yeah. me crazy. Oh, oh, man. No, I get it. But uh, speaking of family and whatnot, um, where, where, where are you at with your whole because we we talked about at the beginning this is this this podcast is basically about balancing our our life and trying to you know balance the shop time with the family time and the hobby time with the you know all the stuff that we're trying to get to in our lifetime as well as now trying to add this into it you know like where are you as far as your your level of comfortability on managing all your time Let's just start out right there. Let's get a base. Let's get a yeah. base level of where we're at. So, okay, I think that's a good idea because, like, because I know I think so. Um, I would say that I have a healthy um, balance right now. Um, mm-hmm. If anything, I could probably dedicate more time to my work. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I think that I'm getting a, a healthy amount of family time in. And I'm getting a very generous amount of shop time. Because like, you know, when you're trying to balance these things, I'm sure you feel the same way. Like shop time, when you're in there having a good time and like you realize you've been in there for four hours straight, like you start to feel guilty, you know? Well, yeah. I, uh, I, count it, I count it by how many times my kids came in to, to get my attention while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. You know what I mean? It's like, I, if I can get, I, I have like a, maybe like a three time limit. You know what I mean? Like after the third, yeah. after the third time of them coming in, I got to put down what I'm doing or I feel like, okay, am I neglecting them? But yeah, anyway, I get what you're saying. So do you completely disagree the first attempt by them too? Oh, I don't. Yeah. I, I, they, they know that's why they come in so many times. Cause they know the first one is just like a, they're just, you know, they're showing their face. Uh, they're not going to get a reaction from me right away, but they're showing their face and, you know, they know, so it's in my, it's in my, my, uh, peripheral, you know what I mean? But, uh, no, I, I it's definitely, it definitely takes them a few times to get me out of the shop, but that's see, if I'm, see, re- that's if I'm really working on something, you know what I mean? So, so that for me, it's different, right? Cause your shop is attached to your house. Yes. Right. 
and my shop is in a de- detached garage. Mm. So, so they have to go outside to come to my shop. They have to make a real effort. Like, like if they come out to the shop, they're usually like how your kids are on the second or third visit yeah. or how my kids are on the first one visit. Right. Where they're like, you made me come out here. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> like I had to come outside to deal with it. And it gets worse as the weather gets worse. Oh, I can imagine. They, but right now, you could probably get a, quite a bit of shop time in if you, if you wanted to because of how oh, cold, yeah. uh, the snow and cold in your house. I'm surprised you don't have an intercom system. I'm surprised Jackie, your wife, has, hasn't put in an intercom to the garage. I, I do have an intercom system, but do everybody you? forgets we have it. Yes, I have I have um, the Google Home, right? Oh, And, and I'm totally. not going to look. I have a Google sitting right next to me, so I'm not going to say the activate command for it. Correct. But if you say... Google, whatever, yeah, and you say broadcast, you could send messages throughout your house. Oh, right. Okay. So okay. they could say broadcast to the garage and say, Hey, can you please come inside? And occasionally they do that. Oh, okay. What kills me is my wife will be like, um, you know, she'll text me, right? And this like and, and I won't see the text, right? Because when I'm in the shop, I'm either working or I'm filming. Yep. Right. Yep. And like I'm missing every notification. So she'll text me like, Hey, you know, can you come inside for a minute? Right. And I won't see that text for like an hour and a half. And she's like, you're on your phone constantly. How did you not see me text you? That is a good, like, that's a good question, Luke. How did you do? How, did she, how do you do not see it? I get spaced out, man. I, <laughs> like my brain just wanders and I'm like, you know, like whatever, man, like, you know, I, I, but as soon as I see it, I'm like, usually my, I, my, I, my first reaction is crapping myself. I'm like, oh shit. Like, yeah. and immediately go to the timestamp. I'm like, oh man, she texted me this like an hour and a half ago. I'm like, oh, I feel bad about that. I think right? what she, I think what you guys, what she might need, think about doing is getting one of those flashing lights that goes off in your shop when the phone rings or when you get a text and you get a flashing light that way you, then she has, you have no excuse. Ooh, what if I what if I built a telepresence robot that you could just move the robot into my line of sight mm. and be like, yo, <laughs> that might work. Yeah, <laughs> I think the Stop flashing standing and talking. <laughs> I think the flashing yeah. light might be cheaper than the robot, but I know you don't do anything boring like a light. So that won't look, work. you know how I live my life. If, if money and time weren't an object, what would you do? I'm like, that's of course what I choose. So I could either get a flashing light or a telepresence robot. Well, yeah. I'm sure. Look, dude, I could easily put, there's a very simple solution for this, right? I could put a light in my shop and I could put it on a $25 Wemo, right? Yeah. And she could just go to her app and flip on the light, right? There you go. <laughs> but it's she like a, using that app. I don't know. Uh, It'll be like a, I I picture it like a comedian when they're up on stage and they get the flashing red light or the flash. (laughs) She just starts, she'll just start hitting that light when it's time for you to come in. You know what I mean? So you start, yeah, you've gone too long. You've gone too long, bro. Your set is over. (laughs) Come in the house. (laughs) So that's what my kids are like then. My kids are like the bouncer that comes in after the set has gone too long. Yeah. Cause, cause that is something that my wife loves doing. Um, and, and I've talked to her about it. And she she always says it wasn't her thing, but um, when uh, when oh man, and I think the kids are coming home right now. They might interrupt the podcast, which would be perfect. But that's awesome. Is that Elvis barking in the background? Yeah, that's that's Elvis barking in the background. <laughs> and I You're... totally got distracted. Um, so yeah, so I'll be like, uh, what was I saying about the um... about the flashing light and the bouncers? Oh the yeah, yeah, the bouncers. So... Yeah, so you know, like by by the time those kids come in there, like I know it's time to wrap it up. Yeah, so, I mean, the difference uh, is, like you said, my kids are the, they just literally have to take ten steps, open a door, and they're in the shop. So like they they you know there's no I could put a sign that says you know keep out you know crocodiles are coming in to eat you. I could, whatever I did, it wouldn't deter them. They would just walk right through that sign and come right out that door. Um, I'm almost thinking about building a second wall because it's like you walk into the into our little laundry room ish. Yeah. Right? So it's like the washer and dryer and there's a and then you step down into the garage, right? Like a little step. 
But yeah. if I put up another wall right there, then I could put up another door. So at least they'd have to go through two doors to get right. a- access to me. And maybe that would slow them down a little bit. <laughs> Dude, maybe you should maybe you should put a light switch, okay, on the other side of that door and lock it. So that way when they come to the door, they could flash the light. There it right? is. See, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I know you like this light idea. I do like it. I well, I mean, come on. <laughs> Uh, but no, so yeah, so balancing the shop life with the work is something yeah. that, and the kids and the family, you, you, right now you think you have a pretty, pretty good grasp on that or, or what's, what's, I, I, look, what, I'm not what's going up I and down. I, I'm not saying, um, I don't need work because obviously it, there's no perfect solution to this, but, um, uh, I think that the family time has been on the rise, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, and partially it's because my kids are, I'm not saying this is a regular thing, but like occasionally they're interested in, in making things, yeah. which <clears throat> I still get shop time. Right. Um, but it's also shop and family time combined. Right. You know, if I, if I, if I invite bubs into the shop to build something, he's going to say no way. But if I said, Hey, Bubs, do you want to make something in the shop? I'm headed out there. He probably has his own list of things that he wants to make. Um, the good part is, is I, I'm making things with him. The bad part is, is that I don't make anything I need to make for my, that is on my list. You of know? course. But it, it, it works out. So, no, I love having, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I, I love having the kids in the shop when, you know, when they want to be in there to do things. You know what I mean? Like they want to come in and work. They, they each have their own apron. You know what I mean? They, they, you know, they're, they're set up to be in there. And uh, when they want to come in and focus and be a part of the the process, like I'm all about it. You know what I mean? Like, let's do it. Let's have some fun. Let's do whatever it, you guys want to do. Um, obviously when I'm not in the middle of working on something, you know, but if they're yeah. just, if they're just in here to be in here to, you know, be a distraction or be like, you know, it's, it's a shop. There's, there's sharp things in here. There's, there's sawdust all over the floor. There's, you know, there's, you know, things they could trip over and fall. And if they're not being careful, if they're messing around, horsing around. So, you know, I always try and stress the safety factor, you know what I mean? Like while they're out here. Um, so that, I mean, that's, but that's why, you know, I enjoy having them here when they're wanting to work or wanting to do something like that, you know, just hanging out and whatever, get out of here, get, go, 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 go yeah. get out of my shop. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, dude, I have only two rules for that specific reason. I have two rules for my shop for the kids. One is no shoes, no shop. Right. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. dude, I've got well, so much crap is on the floor. It's just yeah. So, so bad. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and the other one is, is don't touch anything that turns off. Right. Yeah. Um, so like, look, if he picks up a screwdriver or a wrench, you know, even like a saw, I don't really care that much, right? Um, like, <laughs> I, I noticed the other day that he had m- scribbled on top of my table saw with a pencil. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so um, clearly he's in there and he's bored. Is what yeah. That, that, that means. Yeah. Um, but like, that, that's how I get around that, is I don't let them uh, come in there um, without sh- shoes and I don't let them like touch anything that turns out. Yeah. So, but I will let them like, I will let them help me push the buttons when I'm turning on the CNC, mm. you know, if I'm there, like Do I think over- about occasionally teaching how to use the bandsaw. Cause I remember Jimmy DeResta talking about how his dad wouldn't let him uh, buy toy knives and guns, but he would let him use the bandsaw. So he would just use his dad's bandsaw to make himself wooden knives. <laughs> And guns. <laughs> yeah, and guns and stuff. So, like, I don't know if they guns and stuff, but I remember him talking about that's why yeah. he makes wooden knives. So, like, yeah. I think about sometimes, like, hey, maybe I should teach Bumps how to do this, but, like, no. Nah. And and I got also something I know you don't have to deal with that I do, because I also have neighbor kids that just wander into my shop. Yeah. See, that was so. that. that's a little scary to me. You know what I mean? Shop safety for that reason. Um, I keep all my tools on all my saws that have power are on a remote control all of them so i leave them all off obviously and the only way that you can turn them on is if you use the remote to power them up right so is it like I'm, a single remote for all of the tools yeah because i have tools its own remote 
No, it's one remote that it comes with a three pack that you can buy at oh, home, okay. home Depot for sixteen ninety nine or whatever. No, but uh, you <laughs> not uh, sponsored, not <laughs> sponsored. Um, no, I think it was like twenty bucks, and they're like the defiant ones, and uh, it comes with a three pack of uh, plug in, the receivers yeah, and yeah. then the one remote, and then uh, so yeah, so I have like my everything, all my rem- you know my miter saw is on one, my band saw um is on one and my table saw and um um oh boy the planer i just i just got a text message that um my kids are headed this way (laughs) so they they uh i don't know if it's i don't know and i don't know if it's just my kids or if it's um my Gaggle. kids plus additional. Yeah, they yeah. roll in a posse, dude. Yeah, so, as they should. As they should. I mean, the I mean, mean street, the mean streets of Chicago, man. You got to posse up. Yeah, dude. They, 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 they're little thugs, man. And, <laughs> and they could be at my door right now. I gotta go. I got. I gotta wait. I have to run down to make sure the door is unlocked. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see how the Bluetooth works on my headphones. Oh my god. Uh, this is hilarious. You hear me? I couldn't hear a word you said. Oh, I just went and checked to see if the front door was unlocked. Oh yeah, yeah no, I heard that. I thought you were you meant were you talking the t- during that? No, no, I no. did. I was talking the whole time. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't hear you. <laughs> that's hilarious. Dude, because they're gonna kick down the front door. Like that's that's how they roll. Oh, I believe like, it. You know, uh, <clears throat> so obviously for future podcasts, we should do this when the kids are in school. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> that would be better. This is a horrible time to do this. No, it's fine though. It's uh, it was a, it's it's good. We're doing well. We're the things cruising. Um, so yeah, we got like we got like ten more minutes left anyway. So yeah, yeah. Um, with what I was, we were talking about the shop and stuff and shop, shop safety. And we were talking about, I was saying how I use remote controls for all that yeah, because, yeah. Yeah. because it freaks me out. The idea that my kids at some point, um, could walk in and, and even though I've had that conversation, you know what I mean? But I also have told Frankie to put his shoes away in this shoe thing, 150 times. Um, and he still every day forgets to put his shoes away so it's like do i trust them to listen to me no not at all so especially with something that's going to kill them potentially you know what i mean so i do my best to take that out of the equation and but especially in your situation with shot with uh neighbor kids coming in and stuff like that that you you know don't don't fear you the way your kids do um how do you how do you how do you deal with that or what, what did you i mean do you have that conversation with them or what what's your uh, yeah yeah I, I i told them like the, the first time they walked in the shop i'm like this shop has rules you know because like because like if you lay down rules like especially since they're not my kids they yeah. tend to listen to them more because it's more like a school authority kind of a thing than it is like uh my dad's telling me something like so like what will happen is is like i'll say no shoes in the shop right and then my daughter will come to the shop without her shoes on. Obviously not now when it's zero degrees outside. Yeah. <laughs> but she'll, she'll, she'll come to the door and it's just, she'll like play like the, the floor is lava game right? oh, yeah. with my oh, shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So she'll throw down like a sled there and then she'll step on the sled. Right. And then she'll grab like a bucket and flip it over and move it a little farther away and then step on the bucket. You know, and then she'll like find a piece of wood and jump to that and be like, look, see. I didn't touch the floor, dad. So it's okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the neighbor kids are sitting there watching this and they're like, I thought your dad said no shoes, no shop. You know, my daughter is seven. So she does not take me at all seriously. Mm. And she's like, and they're, she's like, kind of like, yeah, but I could do it, which completely undermines everything I'm trying to do. But I, I, I do take yeah. shop safety very seriously. And especially when these, I mean, like really 
I have it pretty dialed in. Honest to God, you know what the biggest threat is? Is me hurting myself. Yeah. Because it what happens is, is I get so head down, right? And mm-hmm. I'll be sitting there like watching the CNC or like at the table saw. And all of a sudden, they'll, they probably said, hey, dad, five times. Yeah. And I didn't hear them. Yeah. And then they'll yell, hey, dad. And like, as I'm pushing something through the table saw, yeah, it, it'll scare me. Uh-huh. And like, I'm afraid I'll just like push my hand right into the blade. Yeah, so, that's that's a definite dude. That's a definite. That's a serious thing. Like distracting if your somebody. Kids scare you in the shop? Their lot in life is to try and scare me. That is like, <laughs> the, I swear to God, that's what they every day they're trying to scare me. They're hiding around corners. They're hiding behind the couch. That, it's like it was like one time. Four years ago, Penny scared me one time as I came around the corner. She jumped out and scared me. And she thought it was just the, I she thought it was the best thing ever because it got a reaction out of me, which she because ne- I always told her, I can see you coming. I got eyes in the back of my head. Don't try and trick me. Da, 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 da. And so she got me one time. And then ever since then, it's just been like an onslaught. And now my son is in on it. So like they're constantly trying to scare me. So but in the shop. uh. I have an advantage because the door, my tr- the door is in a spot where I basically can see them coming. You know what I mean? Like I don't have any of my tools not facing. Oh, you know what I mean? The so, door, my, the door is always to my back. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's that's not good. <laughs> no. So you have. So I know you like old movies. So I know you're going to get this reference. Mm-hmm. You have the Kato scenario where it's like the old school Pink Panther movies. Oh yeah, where like, yeah. They're always jumping out, and you're like, not now, Kato. Yeah, not now, not now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new my daughter. That's, that's her favorite thing to do, man. Is try and scare me. It's oh, it's hilarious. It's fucking great. She's like, uh, and it's, Dad, Dad, did I scare you? And I don't have the heart to always tell her no. So sometimes I'll be like, Yeah, yeah, you scared me. But you, you know, know my you know my daughter did to me in the shop the other day, right? I'm sitting there, right, and I I think like I could feel her pulling on the back pockets of my jeans, right. Mm. And I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't know what she's doing. She's probably just messing around with me, right? She filled my back pockets with sawdust. <laughs> right? at, at 16, she's going to be trying to steal your wallet. So get, be happy about the sawdust right now. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, so um, so what happened, though, was is that like I dug out most of it. Yeah. But I keep my cell phone in my back pocket usually, right? <laughs> yeah. Dude, so like every like I have so much sawdust in the lightning jack and my phone. I got I had to like use the air b- compressor to blow it out so I could charge my phone again. Which air compressor was that? Oh, that was the California. That to say what you have. Yeah, the California Quiet <laughs> Air, air, air Eight floor. Gallon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not sponsored. which, by the way, I you know that we talked about uh, the the valve on there, and you said you never touched it, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So I asked Mike Alm. I'm like, hey, I saw one of your videos. You have the same one. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm like, do you ever adjust that thing? And he's like, I never touched it. <laughs> and I'm like, am I the only one who like opened like, this thing up, plugged it in, turned it on, and it was like, how does it work? Like, you guys like just plugged it in. You're like, eh, that's good. I, I've seen, you know, I, I, you know, I see hey, like this is how this works. <laughs> the air comes out when I press the nozzle thing. That's, isn't that the whole point of the thing? I don't There's know. There's more to it, man. There's is there? sophisticated. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't do it was, I'm not I, a like, I'm I, not a tool guy. Like I use tools, but I'm not a tool guy. <laughs> do you okay? So speaking of the air compressor, yeah, right. Me, me, me too. Um, so speaking of the air compressor, right? Do you ever let your kids blow each other with the air compressor? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. So, dude, Sean Beckner, right? We both know Sean. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he saw me doing that in my video, and he's like, "Don't do that. It causes blood clots." Yeah, well, I was going to say, it's not a blood clot. It could be an embolism because air can get in. They, they say that air can pass through the skin and get into your bloodstream and then it'll cause, uh, yeah. So that, that's what they Dude, say. Like, you know? I'm worried about the table saw. It's the air compressor that I really got to be worried about. Yeah, well, I mean, just high pressure air. You know, what My I mean? daughter's I trying to blow my son's eyeball out of his skull. Oh, with the freaking- my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love the one that you had the. I love it the uh, the time you had your kids in there with the with the shop back or the dust collector, oh, yeah. and you were yeah. you were doing the hair and Bubs's <laughs> hair was just like so like just like 
like straight he, he up. He looked, that, but he, he looked like the guy from a uh, kid in play with his hair, oh, yeah. like just straight up like that. Like <laughs> he, he, he loved that, but he didn't realize that his hair cleaned out the inside of that uh, nozzle on that air compressor or that, that dust bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sticking a pipe cleaner in the end of that thing. <laughs> So, oh Jesus, man, that was great. Um, yeah. So, oh how God, I, I could hear them in the house. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a horror movie. I can hear them coming up the stairs. They're here, man, they're here. They're in the house. Talking about balancing, like balancing life. Oh, dude, and Elvis is at my door. He's gonna start screaming in a second. Elvis is your uh, Rhodesian Ridback. Yeah, Ridgeback. Look, you can, can, you see this? He's oh staring gosh. at the door, but there's a mirror on the door, so he's staring at himself. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a horse, dude. That is not he a is dog. A horse. He's 110 pounds. Dude. Oh my lord, man! That thing is that's a big dude. Yeah, he's a he's big, and most people are terrified of him when they meet him. So, dude, like I'll be walking him down the street, and people will see me walking him, and they'll cross the street to avoid being near him. That's funny. I mean, I've heard of that with pit bulls. You know, what I mean, I've heard people do that when they see a pit bull walking down the street, but yeah, I've never heard of them doing that with uh what whatever he is, but yeah, they're not as common, I assume. That's he, he's why. a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Rhodesian and then, Ridgeback. Yeah, it, it, so it's a dog that's bred to hunt lions. So hunt lions, the, lions, but not like you think though. Like they like so like basically hunters will go out with a bunch of Rhodesian Ridgebacks and they're big and they're fast and they can run forever. Okay. And um, basically the Ridgeback's job is to exhaust the lion so the hunter could get it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. I was thinking you should probably be, a, if I'm hunting lions, I'm going to bring another lion to hunt yeah. the lion. I don't <laughs> think I'm going to gonna... bring a dog. <laughs> Dude, you, know what, you know what my dog does? is he's hunt, He hunts couch cushions. That's what he does. <laughs> And, he is and, the laziest sack of potatoes you've ever seen in your whole life. But he's yeah. attached to me at the hip. So. He hunts couch cushions and Thanksgiving desserts. Oh, God, <laughs> that's you a know, story. They're... That's a story for another podcast, man. Yeah, dude. The, <laughs> look, we can do a whole. I could probably fill an entire hour on things that Elvis has eaten. <laughs> well, we should try and do that sometime. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure people people will be like, "What the hell are they talking about?" On this yeah. podcast, have you heard the, the latest episode where they talked about what his dog ate for the whole hour? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, dude. Well, okay, wait. So we're, we're oh, okay, chill, bro. <laughs> no, okay, so for future reference, podcast when the kids are at school. Also, don't lock your dog in your office when you're podcasting. Yeah, that's those. Those are good notes. These are good notes that uh, we're gonna take and use. Um, He's trying to save me from the kids. Right now. Chill <laughs> out, bro. All right, look, we only have a couple more minutes left. Do you want to talk about um, uh, uh, what you have on your in your sh- going on in the shop right now? Sure. Uh, what, not what you work at, what, so what have you? Hey, on the, hey man. Okay, hey, I gotta let him out. To yeah, let him out. Elvis, Elvis has left the building. They're on there. Uh, you don't know how long I've been waiting to use that. Elvis has left the building line. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, in my shop currently, I don't have a whole lot going on. Um, I just, um, I did a big cutting board order right before Christmas. I knocked out some Christmas stuff. Um, and then after Christmas orders, I've kind of been a little stagnant to be honest. And that's something that we could talk about. Uh, yeah. Is it creatively or is it just because you want to take a break? No, I feel, I think I felt a little like burned out you know, after cranking out those 30 cut end grain cutting boards and whatnot. And then I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like creatively I'm, I'm like, I've been telling you, I've been telling other people that I want to basically this year try and create some new products that I've never made before or make new products. I've never made before. I don't know if I'll be yeah. cre- creating anything new, but maybe I will. Um, yeah. But I definitely want to try new products and new things to, you know, expand my horizon and stuff and right now i just feel like i don't know i haven't found it i haven't found that thing yet i, I have some ideas i told you i want to do yeah. some bandsaw boxes and stuff like that i've never made one i think that would be fun um but i think i've just been kind of like a ship without a rudder you know what i mean just kind of floating around come out in the shop move some stuff around you know clean off the bench move you know oh lose my alarm 
I'm a professional, by the way, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, is, is it, that's the wrap it up clock, right? That's the wrap it up. Um, like, you remember, that's one, one of my favorite episodes of, uh, or see, skits in Chappelle is the wrap it up clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I've just been a little rudderless this, this, this last month, you know what I mean? So, or over this, the beginning of this year and this month and whatnot. So, I, I did a glue up. I did a couple of glue ups today. I, I, you know, kind of to maybe hopefully I had some scraps from all the cutoffs of the end grain boards and I glued them up and I'm going to, I have a, a pig template that I'm going to mm. use just a small little, it's cause I, I it's a small glue up. I didn't have a whole lot left. So I yeah. had enough for that. I think I'm going to make a little pig out of it. Um, and then the other one I use, I think I'm going to make a, maybe like a bottle opener or something out of the other one. Yeah. Um, so it's another just three panel little piece, but yeah, so I did a couple groups today, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. And, uh, hopefully that'll help spark the, you know, desire to continue to do things and, um, and this, and hopefully, you know, talking to you about it and talking, you know, just, Oh, you know, I got ideas all the time. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. What about you? What about you? Uh, this week I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to wrap up my rainbow sledgehammer. Um, because it's done finally. Um, it, it needs another coat of oil, but you, we both know that takes five minutes. Yes. Um, I really got to get the video done so I can complete this project, which I didn't expect that I'd have an extra project as like a side project for this. So I'm making, uh, I put it out there on Instagram um, that if uh, somebody wa- uh, wa- has any ideas on what I should smash with this mallet, Mm-hmm. Um, let me know. And with the number one thing people told me is I smash like ice, right? Like like sh- like panels of ice. Yeah, that was my that was one of my suggestions. I said tapioca pudding and ice panels because yeah. I thought that would be cool. Give me a karate kid vibe. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do some tapioca pudding for sure. I might forget that. I have to write that tapioca pudding. Man. I could write it <laughs> in my book. I just right want to see you covered in tapioca pudding. That's all it is, really. I mean, like like I as it is like. uh I'm going to have uh, an apron on when I do this because I'm going to be wearing a lot of crap. Oh, I bet for so, sure. Um, but yes. So, so I'm, I, I started making that. So that's something. So this weekend I hope to glue up two cutting boards, um, which I know I don't do a lot of, but I, I'm doing that experiment with the cross hatch and yep. thing. Yep. Um, and then uh, the fit, uh, getting everything built for the, um uh sledgehammer video that i need to build mm-hmm. um like one of the weird things I, i've been thinking about lately is like what i'm gonna put things on that i'm gonna try to smash like what the pedestal is that you're gonna use yeah, yeah. i think it's just gonna be cinder blocks to be honest with you that's yeah that's the cheapest thing i can think of i can, yeah, I can yeah, go yeah. buy like eight cinder blocks for like 10 bucks i mean so, do you have like a stump in your backyard or no 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 stumps i thought about that a stump would be cool yeah actually you know who has stumps is Stu from yellow mug there you go go get Stu. I'll get a stump from, from Stu. i'll go steal it from his house yeah steal a stump from Stu. oh steal a stump from Stu. there we yes. go yes yes <laughs> maybe i could get him to laser my logo onto the top of the stump oh that would be dope that's something you should totally try and do you got time Hit him I up. Totally asked Stu to do that. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, he owes you actually for, for holding all his plywood for like six months. <laughs> Dude, I just oh, get a stump I, from him. I love that. See it's, you know, I love in that video. Plywood. That video that he did. Hey, thanks, Luke, for holding my plywood for six months. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my uh, god! I was like, I'm tired of holding your wood. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly what I said, Luke. I'm like, I don't care, Stu. We need to move on from this wood situation. So um, uh, it's fine. That's but funny. um, yeah. So I got so I got that, and then um, I uh, am um in uh, the the mallets. I'm making those mallets. Um, the pattern plywood, oh, yeah. epoxy core yep. mallets. So that that's the other one. That that right there is is probably. The best thing I'm making this weekend because it's it's a project that I finished and I'm going to visit again. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's like it's been some time since I made the first ones, and my ideas on how to make it better I think are really exciting. 
So nice. So yeah. So that, I got that stuff. I hope to wrap it all up, all of that up this weekend, um, because I'm dying to start my next project, which is the Tie Fighter tape. Oh, dude, that's going to be so epic! I can't believe dude. it. We're, we'll talk about that probably on the next episode of yes. this podcast that we are doing today live for the first time. The yes. jointery. The jointery. Yeah, you guys will hear more and more about this because uh, when it drops, it's going to just explode. It's going to be yes, yes. It's going to be the biggest thing since I don't know. Since so, look, guys, if you want to find us. Uh, ben, why don't you tell people where to find you at? Find me at Condorosa Creations on Instagram, and that's about it. And Facebook, yep. but find me on Instagram. And you can find me, Luke, in the garage everywhere uh, on social media. So I, I think I've signed up for all the accounts. I even have a Twitter account that I don't use. I do too, but I don't. It's not under Condorosa Creations. It's a personal one. But I, Bryce at Waffle Beaver is all over me to get on Twitter. So I might be doing that in this upcoming year as well. Goals, bro. Goals, gotta have them. All right, guys, thanks oh, for yeah. listening. We love you. This has been awesome. Luke, until next time, my friend. Until next time, let's do it. All right, peace. All right.